All right, so we continue. Now there's a lot of things that are happening on the skull that's happening on the midline. Um, the nose is going to have to be developed. Uh, this bottom area needs to be developed. Those things are happening on the midline. So rather than keep continuing to do this um, thing where I ex inset extrude in the inside and then move all the faces and then join all the faces, um, I'm going to choose to apply this modifier. Uh, before I want to do that though, I want to make sure that everything is sort of kosher as this goes. So the merge limit. And you can see if I go like this, I can get in some stuff that's m being attached right there. Okay, so I want to set that below the standard just so nothing grabs on to a point that's not supposed to be joined. And then I'll go into object mode and apply it. Okay, now with that applied, now I can work in this area without fear of running into things. Okay, I'm going to turn that feature off right now so I don't need to see through the mesh. Okay, so what I want to do is hollow this out. Um, I want to scale it just a little bit in. Thickening that. And again, I'm using that inset extrude command. So in this case, I did this. I hit inset extrude and I wheeled the mouse this way and then click and then up and then I'm going to just have to manually go like this and W on the keyboard so that left some really nasty stuff going on right around this area okay but fix that stuff up. Sometimes I just like doing a smooth on these. Now remember I had this feature turned off so I can't see through the mesh. That way I don't grab anything else. And there's a nice little smooth vertex command. That'll help those out. Same with these two. Maybe I'll just smooth vertex those. Sometimes that just fixes just all your topology issues. As long as you have good topology in the area, it works out rather well. Okay, these points could be technically moved back just a little bit. So I'm just reestablishing the flow. You know, even if it's on the bottom of the skull, it, as a beginner student, you should be so picky about flow. Flow is important. I mean, I could look at uh, a student's mesh and said, "Well, you know, they took the time." actually really took the time to put this together and so would a art director they would be looking at your wireframe and be like wow you know this this person has it they're very organized of course at the sacrifice of speed also you know I would argue that there, there's a fine line between moving each point to the point of idiocy and then that kind of um, that kind of behavior is almost OCD and kind of hurts um, a person that is directing or 
or putting a character together because there's some areas that you know that are not being looked at all right so there we go right there nice so how do you know if everything is going good well I haven't put the nose in yet but if I go to multi res and subdivide I should have something that looks like this put it in edge loop right in this area so it doesn't flatten out so much I like to keep that nice and taut in that area and now we can look at that nose and how to develop that start flowing that in more there's a lot of topology here right so let's start thinking ahead here I get it because it's a skull. <laughs> nice. Stupid teacher pun. I love it. Okay, right in this area. Do I really need to see any of this to develop the nose quite well? Uh, no. No, I don't. I think it's a uh, control. There's a shift. Okay, so I can go select inverse shift H okay what is that ah. okay let me inverse it again then hide selected. I'll look up the hotkey for that, but I'm sure there somebody here is going to post that. It used to be control H, but that's all right. So there we go. We have the ability to hide some polygon faces so they're not in my way. And now I can work on that nose. Okay, the first thing is develop an area for the nose. Okay, right there and there. And what I'm doing is making these a little bit into the halfway point here because I'm going to insert an edge loop and that's going to be an inset okay so in this area right here I'll do an inset extrude inset that and then let's look at the side view here and find out what I have to do. Okay, so this stays the same, but this moves. Okay, so I'm just moving all this stuff a little bit at a time, scooching it forward.
doing mainly box selects. Getting really hard to see, but working my best magic here to get you guys to see what I'm doing. Widening now the nasal. So this is that interior. And the interior matches better in this view. Okay. And then I could take those faces and push them back. And now I'm not going to go as far as uh, making like a hole in this area just yet. So for right now, um, I'm just going to go Control E to extrude and then right click and then push these back. Okay, good. And then control R and I'm just going to put it in edge loop here. And there we go. So what does that look at, like in solid? It looks a lot like this. Perfect. Okay, again. If you want to test out, do a multi-ridge, uh, and then subdivide it once, and you can start seeing how this is going. Now, I would say that in this area, you know, that, that actually works quite well, because it's flowing around. In this area, you're always going to have some kind of technical bump because of this ridge right here. I could probably bridge the gap between here and get rid of this topology uh, section so that this blends more into this now. 